Hi, Laura. Thanks for joining me. Can you please introduce yourself and your company? Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Laura. Uh, I work for Adblock Plus. Um, we have a product called Adblock Plus, which uh, maybe you've heard of, maybe you've seen it in your browser. Uh, a lot of people actually forget that they have it, and then when we talk about it, it's like, oh, right, it's this red thing that like kills all the advertising. Yes, that's us. Um, so we make sure that you can surf without being uh, too annoyed by pop-ups or flash ads or that weird thing starting to play music in one of the hundred tabs you have open. Um, and we also uh, have a fantastic project, which is uh, not so known to the public yet, which I can hopefully which tell you later. Which we will get onto, yes. yes. But uh, focusing on Adbot Plus, I do indeed have it installed on my browsers. Um, but there's quite the touchy subject. We, we all consume content, and generally speaking, we like to consume it for free on the internet. Um, but advertising is the traditional model by which content creators and publishers monetize that material. So how do you balance uh, the desire of users not to be essentially spammed with annoying ads and the need to generate revenue from quality content? Uh, good question. Um, not an easy task because at first it seemed like very um, uh, contrary positions. There is a very little middle ground. It's quite a heated discussion, but actually through extensive uh, research and like talking to users, we've been able to um, uh, prove that there is some sort of advertising and some amount of advertising most people really don't mind and are okay with. Uh, the best example are um, search advertising. Like you specifically search for something and you know like, okay, these like differently layouted uh, um, results are paid ads. Um, but they're still relevant to what you just looked for, so you don't really mind them. It's a big difference to a pop-up auto-playing or like a pre-roll video that you have to watch on YouTube that like, takes a minute and you actually want to just see a 10-second spot. Um, so we define criteria for what is um, acceptable in advertising, we call it the acceptable ads uh, criteria. Um, and we allow them through our filter list. So we block all ads, but we let through some ads uh, that, are, um, that have proven to be not annoying to users. And these ads can be used for publishers uh, to create revenues from these people that usually would be, would be lost for the, the advertising ecosystem. So you want to strip out the annoying ads, the ads where people might not realize it's an ad or the ones that auto play music and get in the way of a user's enjoyment of the content and material. Um, but you still face challenges amongst a, a lot of publishers and content owners where they feel threatened yeah. that this is affecting their revenue. Um, so I think this is what what we're now getting onto, this new service you're, you're looking to launch later this year in October. What exactly is that? So, like I just said, we always try to like work with both sides because we totally see the need for, for quality content, especially in journalism, to be financed. And yes, so far advertising is the biggest uh, revenue source for them. And we never wanted to just steal their revenues or block their revenues. I mean, we're not stealing them because we're not getting them either. Um, but we just see a fundamental problem with the way content is monetized so far because it's just advertising. You don't have another option, even if I as a user say like, okay, I'd really like to fund this, this website differently. There's very few big sites where I can get a subscription, but then again, I can't get a subscription for all the 10 newspapers I maybe read articles from during a month. Um, also, it's just a pain to like click through the process everywhere. So we thought, okay, there needs to be a easy, universally uh, alternative for people that uh, understand the need to fund content and want to do it directly because advertising, there's a third party, there's an advertiser. I mean, neither the publisher nor us as users um, get like direct value from looking at ads, right? We just know it's, it's uh, well, it's needed to keep everything working. But if we have a way where I can easily like uh, give you a, a, a small amount for the content you produce, uh, why wouldn't I would rather do that? So that is how Flatter works. Flatter is uh, the service that we're launching. Um, it's also just like Apple Plus, a extension that you can install in your browser. And uh, you can define a budget that you want to spend. You can say it's like a 
three euros or pounds or dollars. Um, of course, you can always spend more, but uh, you can change it every month. You can say, okay, this is uh, what I want to go to all the content that I consume. Um, and then Flatter makes sure that this money is uh, distributed to all the sites you look at, to uh, Wikipedia, to big newspapers, to small blogs, to like a vlog that you watch, to um, maybe also some cartoons that you scroll through, of course, cat videos, <laughs> um, never forget cat videos. So we want to incentivize quality content, but certainly we're not the ones to define what is quality. Um, we all as users should do that. Like maybe you hate cat videos, then uh, they don't have much quality for you. But um, Flatter, the extension, makes sure um, your money goes really to the sites you engage with. So we say we don't want to incentivize clickbait. Basically advertising um, has brought us to clickbait, right? Because advertising online works with eyeballs, with attention, with ad impressions. Mm -hmm. So the more impressions, the better. That's why you have these clickbaity headlines. That's why you have like slideshows where you have to click and click and click because every click generates more ad revenue. And uh, we want to stop that uh, development of the internet. We want to go back to really honor what has value to users. So based on the time you spend on a site and the, the activity, like either you scroll to read the text to the end or we can see that you watch a video. Actually, I can't, but the, the plugin says it's super important because we're not uh, becoming the next NSA tracking all the data. It all stays on your computer just when the extension decides, okay, this is a site that should get 10 cents from you, then we get that information. Hey, please take 10 cents from your budget and send it to the site. So Flatter is essentially a micropayment platform that allows uh, users and people who love quality content to consume that content without the creators having to resort to annoying advertising or rely on it quite so heavily exactly. and especially the way it gets abused as you said with clickbait yeah. and, and so on um, so where do where do publishers and users go to find out more about this product well they go to uh, flatter.com flatter without the e so it's just f-l-a-t-t-r um, and right now we're in a beta stage so you can sign up to become a beta user and we're going to publicly release it in october um, everybody who creates content, even if you just put out a blog post every now and then, or if you're representative of a big uh, newspaper, you can also go to flatter.com and you can sign up as a publisher. All you need to do is verify your website or your channel and uh, give us your bank uh, details and then we'll start sending you money. Sounds great. Laura, thank you so much. Sure, thank you.